From amusement parks to bonfire night to New Year's Eve celebrations, fireworks are a form of entertainment all around the world. Their impressive colours and fantastic explosions are a carefully assembled mixture of chemicals and fuel. When a firework explodes, it generates three notable forms of energy, sound, light and heat. The characteristic colours in fireworks are produced by heating metal salts such as calcium chloride or sodium nitrate. Colour production in fireworks involves two main mechanisms, incandescence and luminescence. Incandescence is light produced from heat. Heat causes a substance to get hot and glow, resulting in the emission of infrared, then red, orange, yellow and white light. For example, how a light bulb works. At varying temperatures, different colours of light will be produced based on the power of the emission. Lower temperatures will produce red light, whereas higher temperatures correspond to white light. Blue and green colour require temperatures much higher than those practical for fireworks, so instead, the process of luminescence is used. On the left of the screen, you will see a representation of the absorption of light by the atoms of each element. The energy of the light is shown as H nu. The absorption promotes electrons from their ground state to a higher excited state. On the right, you can see that as the electrons drop back down to the ground state, they emit light. This light has a certain energy characteristic to the element and corresponds to a wavelength of a colour. Elements that emit light of higher energies will correspond to shorter wavelengths and be characterised with violet or blue light, whereas lower energy emissions will correspond to higher wavelengths and orange or red colour. Varying metal salts are used to produce the different colours of fireworks as shown on screen. For example, sodium salts are characteristic of yellow colour and copper salts of blue. In order to choose the colours of fireworks, pyrotechnicians use a chromaticity diagram as shown on screen. This is designed using the three primary colours. In theory, if fireworks of these colours can be produced, then any colour is possible. The wavelength of each colour can be found along the curve of the diagram. It is not as simple as finding the wavelength and putting elements together, as some molecules are so reactive they cannot be directly packed into a firework. The process of colourful sparks being released into the night sky is a carefully timed sequence from liftoff to explosion. The composition of a firework is made up of six major ingredients. Fuel, an oxidising agent, a reducing agent, a regulator, a colouring agent and a binder. The fuels and oxidising agent are often combined together to form what is known as black powder or gunpowder. This typically has a composition of 75% potassium nitrate, 15% charcoal and 10% sulphur. The mechanism works by the charcoal losing electrons to potassium nitrate, reducing the oxidizer and therefore releasing oxygen. Bonds are formed between the charcoal and the oxygen atoms to form a relatively stable complex. As the video clip shows, only a small amount of energy is required to start a combustion. This releases a massive amount of energy as the solid liquefies and then vaporizes into flame. Oxidizers produce the oxygen gas required to burn the mixture of reducing agents and excite the atoms of light emitting compounds. The most commonly used oxidizers are nitrates, chlorates and perchlorates. The reducing agents, carbon and sulphur, combine with oxygen to produce the energy of the explosion. The reactions of nitrates do not produce a temperature high enough to energise the metal salts, therefore they are solely used to provide the initial thrust to power the firework into the air. Chlorates are instead used which reduce temperatures of 1,700 to 2,000 degrees Celsius, resulting in a more intense reaction. The metal salts are placed around the black powder in what are known as stars. The powder is trapped within a shell which is positioned within a launch tube. This allows for pressure to build up during the reaction and force the firework to be hurled into the air. A lighted fuse provides the energy that is required for the combustion of the black powder and is either made up of electrical wires connected to a firing panel for the electronically controlled displays or for wraps of textiles around a black powder core. The fuse will reach all the way through the firework and trigger a secondary bath of the outer shell which allows for the sparks to be thrown into the night sky. The firework is produced in such a way so that the timing of combustion allows the black powder to ignite then burn through to the stars so that the colourful sparks ignite at the highest point of travel. When watching a firework display, we see the fireworks much sooner than we hear them. This happens because light travels about a million times faster than sound. 
The speed of light is 299 million metres per second, whereas the speed of sound is only 340 metres per second. The light is therefore seen almost instantaneously, whereas the sound takes around three seconds to reach you. Next time you're watching a firework display, think about the precise chemistry that is put into producing just moments of entertainment.